in every neighborhood you'll find this out. In every, in every apartment complex, there's a, uh, somebody who knows what's going on. And we found that it's either a granny, you know, or just kind of one of these observant types. Well, Don's one of these observant types. Worked his whole life. Uh, he was a prison guard for a lot of years. Uh, got laid off from the prison system when it went from the state to private. Went truck driving, broke his back in a truck. Ended up being disabled, huge, you know, ended up gaining a couple hundred pounds and depressed and all this kind of stuff and then got his wheels back under him. But, uh, so when I met Don, you know, uh, it was a year ago or something, he would just sit out in front of the neighborhood and he would just watch us. We came in, did block parties, began having a relationship with some of the single moms, helping them do this and that and next thing. He'd sing his, see us bring beds in or, you know, dishes or you know, food, baskets, or whatever, you know. And uh, he wasn't impressed with Jesus at all. Right across from his apartment, we were having a Bible study. He was not impressed and didn't want to come. Uh, but uh, he was impressed with us. And, uh, and, he, and uh, he came and told us, he said, uh, um, I, I, of course, go and visit everybody, right? So I visited him. And, uh, and he goes, I appreciate what you're doing out here in the neighborhood. That's, that's really helpful. And he goes, uh, you don't know how tough it is sometimes to go from where I was to where I am, you know. And uh, and so um, I would say, Don, you know about everybody, don't you? And he goes, oh, yeah. I said, will you help me? And, uh, and he said, sure. He said, that lady over there needs a bed. They're sleeping on the floor, her and two kids. And I'd say, okay. I'd bring it to him. And a couple days later, he'd call me and say, that gal up there just slept with somebody so she could feed her children. And I would bring food up there and talk to her and tell her not to do that again, make sure she called me. And on and on and on, all these little things. He just kept me abreast. When new people would move in the neighborhood, he literally emailed me a list of the new people that were in the neighborhood. So and so just moved in, three kids, two, two. It looks like a barber need to help them. They ain't got nothing. You know, and that's what he would and uh, so every time I'd come over, man, the first, my first visit was to go sit by him. He was always sitting out in front of his apartment, keeping an eye on everything. And one day his, uh, his uh, apartment manager called me and said, hey, uh, I thought you might want to know this. Don Benson's in intensive care. And so we rushed up there. And as soon as I opened the door and he saw me, he started to break down. And uh, I said, Don, man, what's going on with you? And, uh, and he said, well, I'm glad to see you. He said, I was raised by my grandma. My mama left me when I was an infant. And she died about 25 years ago, and I've been a very sick man. I've never had anybody come visit me. And I said, Don, man, the doctor just told me right when I walked in that all your systems had shut down. And you've been helping me help everybody in that community. I said, are, are you ready for all your systems to be shut down? Are you okay with God? And he just grabbed me a big old bear hug and asked me if I would help him find Jesus. Mm -hmm. And now he never misses a Bible study. Still, you know, he's still my main man to help me find out what problems are going on in the neighborhood. But, you know, Romans 2 4 says that it is the kindness of God that leads to repentance. And he changed his heart about God through the kindness of God. That was what led him to repentance. I mean, he had already had evangelism teams come through his neighborhood. If you're going to do an evangelism thing, you always go to the project. Hand your EE track out, you know what I mean? Goodness gracious, they know EE better than we do. <laughs> you know what I mean? But one time Don told me this. He said, Bobby, you know what it feels like to be a merit badge? He said, you know what it feels like to be somebody's missions project? And he changed my life. 
because I'm the director of a ministry who creates missions projects. And I realized that, you know, the difference between me and the last missions project that he'd been involved in is that I loved him and I had a relationship with him and I didn't come once. I'm going to be there all the time. And we're friends. He's not my 